Hello Newtonians, in this video, we are going to learn about engineering drawings. We are going to look into why they important, where we use them, and what are the main requirements. Then we are going to show you examples of the two most common types of engineering drawings, detailed or part and assembly drawings, and we will show you their building blocks. So stay tuned. One of the most represented ways of communicating the design intent is engineering drawing. Similarly, as every country has its own set of grammar and spelling rules, engineering drawings also have their own set of rules defined by standard organizations. We can observe engineering drawing as a unified language that engineers use to communicate independently of each other's spoken or written language. The engineering drawing rules are defined and embodied in the publications of standards organizations, for example, ISO and ASME. According to ISO 29845-2011, a drawing is technical information, given on an information carrier, graphically presented in accordance with agreed rules and usually to scale. Although engineers created the engineering drawings in the past by hand, today, they are primarily done in CAD software like Autodesk Fusion 360. Creating drawings using CAD software is a straightforward process. We make, or import, a 3D model, and then we start inserting the views in the drawing and adding dimensions. Simple, right? It is pretty simple to learn the commands in the software, but knowing which rules to apply and why is not quite. Always keep in mind that software is only as smart as the person using it. Imagine that you are designing a simple steel plate. You are designing in Europe where the standard measurement system is the metric system of unit measurements. You are sending a hand sketch with only outline dimensions to your supplier in the USA using the imperial system of unit measurements. For the sake of argument, let us say that the steel plate dimensions are 100 by 50 by 10 millimeters. Your USA supplier confirms the order, and you receive the steel block with the dimensions 2540 by 1270 by 254 millimeters. If you converted the given numbers back to inches, you would get precisely the same numbers as you defined them on the drawing. The only thing missing is that you didn't specify the units of measurement on the drawing. Looking at this simple example, we can see why creating a clear set of rules and norms are imperative for engineering drawing. You may ask yourself, where do we use engineering drawings? I am not exaggerating when I say everywhere. With the use of engineering drawing, professionals have built everything physical around us. Furthermore, engineering drawing is the most used way of communicating between the mechanical design engineer and everyone else in the production chain. For example, commercial cross-Atlantic airplanes contain millions of different components. These components make up various sub-assemblies and assemblies, and so on. These assemblies and components must be physically manufactured and constructed in a safe and reliable product, aka airplane. Engineering drawings are legally binding. That means your manufacturer is not legally obligated to refund you for the faulty parts if he created them according to the specifications on the drawing. Also, the manufacturer is protected from liability, and he is not responsible for any material damage or possible injuries that could be caused by using those parts. Therefore, engineering drawings need to meet the following requirements. Engineering drawings must conform to the relevant industry standards, ISO, ASME. Alternatively, standards can be used that are applicable within countries. Also, the engineering drawing must be as language independent as possible. Therefore, the standard defined symbols should be used wherever possible. Keep in mind that standards can be translated in different languages, but symbols still hold the same meaning. The content of the engineering drawing should be clear, and there should not be room for ambiguity. For the artifact to be manufactured according to the drawing specification, there must be only one possible interpretation. This should go without saying, but the engineering drawing must be completed before releasing it. All relevant manufacturing information should be stated, dimensions, tolerances, applicable standards, symbols, surface finishes, surface treatment, heat treatment, special notes, etc. As we can see, the process of composing an engineering drawing, drafting, is not to be taken lightly. Composing a clear, unambiguous, and complete drawing according to the applicable standard requires a great deal of learning and practicing. As a mechanical design engineer, you will surely come across a detailed and assembly drawing. According to ISO 29845-2011, a part drawing depicts a single part that cannot be further disassembled and includes all the necessary information required to define the part. Everything needed to manufacture the single part is defined in the part drawing, example, the form, dimensions, 
tolerances, material, finishes, treatments, etc. The building blocks of the engineering drawings are as follows. Number 1. The drawing border defines the limit of the formal drawing area. It means that every content relevant to this drawing must be inside this border. Number 2. The title block contains all the relevant information needed to identify the drawing, example, part number, part name, drawing owner, designer name, etc. Furthermore, a title block defines other relevant information, example, material, standard, perspective type, scale, page number, etc. Number 3. Notes are used to specify other equally important information needed for complete drawing specification, example, overall surface finish or surface finish specified for a particular surface, color, reference to CAD model, etc. Number 4. Main orthographic views are used to draw 3D objects in 2D. The main view, front view, always shows the face with the most details. We can project other views from the front view, and there can be a maximum of 6 orthographic views. The number of views depends on the complexity of the 3D object. Number 5. Isometric projection provides the visualization of the 3D object. It belongs to the pictorial projections group, specifically the axonometric projection. Isometric projection is an addition to orthographic views and is extremely useful for visualizing complex objects. Number 6. The section view is used to show the internal geometry of the part. The process of creating the section view is called sectioning. We are using a plane to cut through the object to gain clarity of its internal features. Number 7. The detailed view is used when the detail of the object is not visible due to the scale of the drawing. In that case, we are using a thin line to circle out the object detail and enlarge it to an appropriate scale. The area inside of the circle represents the enlarged area. According to ISO 2984-5-2011, an assembly drawing represents the relative position and or shape of a group of assembled parts. The assembly drawing is not showing the manufacturing details of a single part, but merely how the individual parts are supposed to be assembled. The main assembly consists of sub-assemblies, parts, and materials. In addition to the previously stated building blocks, on the assembly drawing, we can also find Number 8. An exploded view is used on the assembly drawing to show the relationship of the parts in the most realistic manner. Number 9. A parts list or bill of materials, BOM. The parts list defines the list of the object's elements. The bill of materials is a list of the sub-assemblies, parts, and materials required for building the assembly. The parts list or BOM can be added directly to the drawing or provided with the assembly drawing as a separate list. The difference between the parts list and BOM is that the parts list defines only one structural level. Additional tables also can be added and are used to display information about the part specification, example, color specification for the same parts, design, example, product families, or any other suitable information for tabular representation. A great deal of practice is required to become an expert draftsman. As a mechanical design engineer, engineering drawing is something that you will encounter on a daily basis. You can think about engineering drawing as a fundamental piece of information in mechanical engineering, hence the art of reading and creating the drawing is fundamental knowledge for any mechanical engineer. The better you understand the rules for drawing creation and the CAD tools you are using, the faster and more efficient you will become. The sooner you internalize these rules, the sooner you will unburden your brain and create a space for other important technical knowledge. You can learn to design anything, but your design is useless if you cannot communicate it properly. Do you like our videos? Then, give us a thumb up, comment, and share it with your friends, colleagues, and on your social media channels. And if you want to become a part of the Newtonians, make sure to subscribe to our channel.